three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing, episode 27. And I'm joined by the lovely Dom the Bomb Herberton. And may I just say, you have become a right diva. How you come? Know, what do you mean, how come? You hit, the, you hit the record button there and you put your finger up, you're like, <laughs> right, we're on, sweetheart, I'm working here. <laughs> it's a Dominic, no, we're working. <laughs> like, God, so anyway, across from me is the, the princess himself, is Chrissy Rouse. <laughs> so we've got a, a pre-recording conversation coming up, which we've just recorded on Skype with uh, Keith Farmer, four times British champion, and currently doesn't have a ride for next year. Currently jobless. Currently <laughs> jobless, I and uh, come back from a real, you know, t- bad, bad injury from Knock Hill this year. But uh, yeah, we've got quite a long interview coming up with him, so we'll keep the the intro short and sweet. But uh, just before we get going, we've got we've got new sp- we've got our uh, our a loyal sponsor in t- in Contango Training, leading risk finance and treasury consultancy. But more importantly, by Grace and fans, <laughs> and we've also got a new sponsor. Got a message on the old Twitter. So the company name is Post Postal Weight Construction Limited, and uh, based over in Carlisle, family-run business. So it's Matt and his dad Graham. Uh, they've been working for over thirty years, cover all kinds of construction work around uh, around their area. Massive bike racing fans. They go to loads of BSB, MotoGP, in Silverstone. MotoGP, Silverstone and Hereth every year and they're going to the TT for the first time next year so you'll have to you'll have to introduce yourself Dom uh, they also do as many track days as they can and uh, Matt's done a little bit of racing in CB500 so I hope that's going well and uh, thanks very much for sponsoring the show, really appreciate it and uh, like I say, big thanks to Incontango Train and our loyal sponsor as well. Oh there we go then, so what you been up to son, what you been up to? Uh, What's the recent crack? Well, so t- we've been ba- banging these podcasts out quite quite regularly these last couple. So it's uh, it's good. I've been looking at all the stats, and it's good to see we've been having loads of uh, loads of downloads. And obviously, we've stuck the latest one on YouTube, so it's been out for four days. I think we're on about five hundred and eighty. Oop, there's a bit of background noise there. Oh, we have we have a back feed. <laughs> we have a back feed. Uh, but, now we're some backsplashes there. <laughs> really ruins the <laughs> <a> romance. <laughs> Uh, we've had a good, I think it's like about f- 600 downloads, so for the, for our first four days, happy with that. Uh, and just been busy at work, uh, it was my birthday, the end of, well, we recorded the pod, the last podcast on my birthday. That's so dedication, kids, that, that, that is dedication to the cause. Did a few, uh, what did we do, went out with me pals Friday, went out for a lovely, my girlfriend treated us to a lovely meal at the Baltic, have you been to the Baltic in Newcastle? It's like that, no, uh, I'm trying to think of the that hotel, modern art. I thing in you know uh, the Amazon Hotel. I've abseiled off that. Have you? I wasn't skipping out on a bill. It was for charity. <laughs> I was where I'd be like, abseiling off that with charity by charity. Oh, yeah, good. but no, I, I can't afford things like that. I, went for I, nice, I cut trees for a living. It so. was a, it was like a fine dining thing. So yeah, that was lovely. And then just went out for a nice Sunday, Sunday dinner with the family on Sunday. So yeah, not not a great deal. Busy at work, but uh, got a off. nice new watch there. I see. What what what's all I, this about? I that that was from a, a sponsor actually, MSG Bike Bike Gear uh, down in Stockton. But uh, I was after like a fitness watch, you know, for like me running and that. And uh, the it was the Garmin Instinct I've decided to go for. So I'll uh, I've only been wearing it a couple of days, but I'm mega impressed so far. Waterproof. I was about to say you Don't live in to... Durham, son. You better be careful walk around or watch. You'll end up getting <laughs> mugged. Good looking lad like you, you'll get mugged in a heartbeat. <laughs> but uh, I other other than that, just just busy grafting and like I say, really looking forward to Brands Final BSB this weekend. But uh, what about your good self? Well, I've taken up golf. Golf, golf. <laughs> Shut up! I'm man. telling you, I'm telling you. You're right. the least convincing no, no, golfer no, no, I've ever met. Uh, right here. Anyway, Sunday, walking up the ride there, in the Swedes, in the Tweeds, the lot. Anyway, I got myself to the ninth hole, and you'll never guess what I did, mind. Go on, have a what, guess what I did. Uh, hole in one. I got a hole in. Uh, 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 honestly, got a, I'm up, telling man. you, got a hole in one on the in ninth your sock. hole. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so I walk over. Proud as punch. And I go down to pick up the golf ball. Anyway, I get pick up the golf ball. What pops out? A genie. Eh? I'm telling a genie pops out. Right. So we've got we've had the peacock, we've had Oh no, <laughs> I'm telling you, this one, this is what I'm telling you, right? So anyway, this genie pops out. And he goes, Yeah, not many people get a hole in one on the ninth hole, and for a reward, I'm gonna grant you a wish. And I'm just sitting there thinking. Wait, what does every man want in his life? So anyway, I asked for a big penis. You know what I mean? I said, look, mate, right? 
I want a big penis. You know what I mean? I want showing off material he cans. Well, consider it done. Clicks his fingers. Goes off down the hole. And anyway, pops his head back up and cans. Right, it's going to take a couple of minutes to kick in. I'm like, all right, no bother. So anyway, I'm walking back down to the club. And I feel this itch in my pants. I'm going, like, whoa, what's going on here? So anyway, I look down at the bottom of my trouser leg. What's sticking out the bottom? Way it's the end, isn't it? Hanging out the bottom, dragging across the floor, and I'm looking down, going, oh, no, what, what the, what, 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 I'm panicking. So anyway, what do I see behind us? Terry. Terry, come, well, you know, Terry, anyway, he works on the shops. Anyway, Terry comes over and goes, you didn't, did you? I can't, what are you on about? You can't, you got a hole in one on the ninth, I can't, how do you know? He can't, well, you know, I asked for more money anyway, I've spent a lot of it. I said, what, 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 are you gonna, what am I going to do? He can't, well, you're going to have to do the same thing I'm doing. I'm can't, well, what's that? He says, you're going to have to go back to the ninth hole and try and get a hole in one again. I've been trying for years now, I'm going, well, I can't walk in the clubhouse with this thing, mind, it's bloody embarrassing. So anyway, all night, Sunday night, Chrissy. All night, mind. Full of Red Bull, full of everything. Chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. Guess what? I didn't only go and do it again, didn't I? So anyway, I run over the ninth hole. I pick out the golf ball. My mate pops out. The genie's back and he can't. Oh, hey, all, oh, oh, hold on, son. Weren't, weren't you here last night? Asking for the, the extension. I can't. Aye, aye, aye. I said, wait, look at it, man. What, what am I going to do? He can't. Where I can get, like, you know, well, what, what what do you want? Well, you know, I can't, can't, well, I can get rid of it. He goes, I goes, no, 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 no. I want longer legs. (laughs) 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 So that was my weekend. How was it? (laughs) There they are. On to the podcast. On to the podcast. There of uh, <laughs> you just got us thinking of uh, me mates told us a good joke at, at the weekend but I'm trying I'm try- I think I don't think I could I we don't have a good one we'll, do- we'll save it for next week, <laughs> for next week. <laughs> yeah, no that's a that's a that's a piggy style joke by it is. is a piggy style no I actually nicked that from a guy called Stephen Moore I was running around the place with a moustache I was uh, well obviously I was racing up his fortune on the weekend uh, ah yeah, I see well yeah. firstly you were at Croft weren't you with um, RC Express team for a test day aye well um, they didn't take any wet tyres and it was in the northeast, so, in the northeast, I know. So Danny <laughs> Horn came all the way up with the two bikes. So Paul Jordan was over here working at Durham, so he came down just for the test day. So he's racing at Brands this weekend um, on the Supersport bike. So he was whipping around doing laps, and I'm just sitting there with my finger in my ass, going, "Oh God, wait, I've got nothing to do here." Oh, and I think it just started to dry up on the last session. So we got around about what ten laps in, just to get the bikes shaken. Like Danny's just rebuilt the pair of them, so just to shake them down and get them prepped. Mm-hmm. And no, I was kind of hoping, you know, like like you said, we're in the northeast, so we're not going to get the good weather all the weekend. But I tell you what, did you see the times from Croft this weekend? No, I didn't. I like seen the it. No Limits Club. Oh, uh, it's Barry Teasdale won the I, won the Super was, the Pirelli Super Series or whatever it's I, called. Something like that. And my, 21s t- or something. Did they get down to twenty ones? The last time I saw was twenty twos. Uh, I think ba- twenty. I think Baz does do twenty ones. What have you like. doing around there? I've never been on a thousand. So. Oh, get in somewhere <laughs> faster than you. There's two tracks TT in there. The, no, I've only, like I, I've only ever gone in March and like we like I used to go with my own bike and my own friends and that. But I could get down. Well, to both a, of them. What friends and what? <laughs> like you cheeky fucker. <laughs> no, no. So, um, I can I could get down to twenty threes. No, that, that is shifting around Croft well, mind, isn't it? James Counton could do a 24 and a 600. Bloody hell. You know what I mean? That just showed what the lad could do. Mm-hmm. But like with me, Barry, were like doing 23s in March. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it just shows. What, and it wasn't the warmest of weekends. You know, it's quite the polar opposite in the mm-hmm. times. But like Crowey was doing 23s. Johnson, they're all down to 23s, 22s. And you think, and my, it like, you know, for essentially a club, it just shows the strength of like who was there. Yeah, Everyone yeah, was definitely. shaking down, getting ready. But like John Ingram was there, and mm-hmm. pretty much the Thundersport grid mm-hmm. turned it would, up. It would be nice one day to get Croft obviously back on the BSB calendar just for for us to have a local round. But I'm a f- I think they are really now, plans. Well, they've actually reinforced because obviously there were. Um, I was speaking to one of the um, marshals. I think they're obviously a very a local, local for local people, and um, the re the redoing the the safety barriers. Aye. And like putting up considerably bigger chain link fences behind the chain link that we've already got, and I think they're putting planning permission in for bigger calves and everything. Right. But bear in mind they've re-tarmacked the whole thing mm-hmm. in April this year. Ah, I see. So the British touring cars are there. So you know, and you know what them car idiots are like. They mm-hmm. like to spend money. Mm-hmm. So I think they're wanting to re-put it back on. But like you say, to have a 
because your local mm-hmm. is not kill. Aye, aye, which is still like what hundred and if you go the motorway way, it's like hundred and forty miles. So it's aye, not really that. It's, it's my lo- closest, but it's not local by any stretch of the imagination. We, but yeah. uh, it would be mint to have Croft back. The last time Croft was on the BSB calendar, uh, I was in. Uh, the last race I had there was in 2011 it was my first year on, on in BSB on the GP125 bike and I crashed three times that it was a disaster for me <laughs> um, I was off it more than I was on it that weekend but yeah that was the only chance I've sort of had to have have Croft as a local uh, it's a you know it's, it's a cool quirky track and obviously no when we had Brogan on the podcast and we were talking about that, that last lap that with honestly, John I'm, McGuinness I S. love Scott that Smart, race I, actually, I replay that back just for a smile on my face oh, that is absolutely class race and, uh, uh, I think I think that last hairpin would you know it would create some great racing because you know you'd have a few Larry lunges at the end and uh, it would uh, it's all good. But if anyway, mate, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to crack on because we've got this long interview coming on, and I know you you're a waiter, waiter. Stoke Stoke on oh. is it Stoke on Trent? Yeah, well I've I've gone from um, Stoke up to Edinburgh now and back on the way back down. So this is like what uh, I think this is the earliest podcast we've ever done. It'd be, it's, it's, it's bloody refreshing. But I tell you what, I've got a couple of quick shout outs yeah, before you, you crack on. Um obviously Aidan Robinson, it's your birthday, happy birthday. He's um obviously uh, I wouldn't be anywhere without him, you know, mm. and a, a lot of riders can say the same, you know, he's put a lot of broken things back together, the puzzle master himself, and obviously um, racing up at the weekend, I was racing with a lad called um, Aaron Sadler, and he was absolutely flying, you know, he's been doing thunder sports all year, and I, I found out that he won the pre-national thunder sport championship, also the North East championship, the 600 and 500, he gets around more than Davy Todd, that lad, I'm telling you, he's out and about. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Davy's new leathers, by the way, from they, a car? They, I tell you what, they don't have stand out Do they're, I no, they're look, looking good like and mm. the la- i tell you what we'll, um, we'll have to talk about it on another show but david todd's had a fantastic year yeah absolutely amazing we'll get him year. back on we'll have to get him back on because obviously we, we had him at the beginning and you know like to reflect on what he's done it would mm. be a hell of a story so sure. hey well if you're listening davy well done <laughs> but um no like i say yeah Absolutely awesome weekend. Aaron Sadler and um, a lad called Frith. Well, I was on a bike that like I've never sat on before. The bike was set up for a rather a, a girthier fellow than me. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. The no, the bike was last ridden a couple of years ago at the Manx Grand Prix, and it was just not set up for me. On put it this way, Chrissy, the bike like well. A fat lass in a rowing boat would have had more stability than what I had mm. on that weekend. Absolutely loved it though, and it it's definitely highlighted what I've learned from this year, like mm-hmm. working with Colin Davies, who, you know, he's my cams, Yamaha's, uh, he's Jason O'Halloran's crew chief. Mm-hmm. And I really have learned this year what I want from a bike. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you've got to hop on, like, quite frankly, the bike wasn't set up and Peter Dobson, who lent me the bike, absolutely, you know, he's more laid back than deflated Lilo. Mm-hmm. But I'm over the moon, he just lent me the bike because we, we didn't have the tools to set it up or anything and I just rode the absolute wheels off it. Mm-hmm. Abs- I got down to the same lap times as the, the winner in that, but I was absolutely on the ragged edge. I'm the, like pushing the front, folding the front, trying to get on the power, losing the back, and it was just that for ten laps around his fortune in in cold conditions. It was it was great, and mm-hmm. it's the results weren't there, but I'm over the moon with how I rode. But yeah. people from the outside looking in, can oh he did crap, mm-hmm. but in I feel dead proud of myself to yeah, be fair yeah. but obviously not as well as uh, my mate Chicken Charlton nope. and uh, Aaron Sadler but uh, yeah I've seen Ch- Chicken did really well on the big bikes and, oh uh, I obviously was you out on the on the Triumph and also on the, the sidecar passenger how was how was the, that absolutely loved it um, yeah. a lad called Boris there's a proper <laughs> Scottish name for you there, isn't it? Well, all Russian yeah. one or the other um, so I was hopping I was pulling in on the 600 mate and jumping straight onto a sidecar, I was ripping my knee sliders off and jumping straight into a sidecar, uh, which is mint. I absolutely love sidecar. It's just the different dis- and the adrenaline rush you get yeah. off it. Uh-huh. It's just you're skipping your head off the tarmac. Like, tss, tss, it's just mint. Mm-hmm. Absolutely mint, mate. <laughs> oh, but fantastic. hey, there we go. Then I've, I've I've actually got a good good one now. You've reminded us. Oh, about go on then, come in. <laughs> so uh, young young lad comes home and he says to his dad. Uh, we've been we've been doing a project at, at school, and uh, I need to do some research on the difference between theory and reality. And he goes, "All right." The dad goes, "All right, son. Uh, well, I tell you what. Go and ask go and ask your mother if she would sleep with the plumber for a million quid." <laughs> so the little son, he's only six. He like he goes off and he he asks his mother, and he comes back and he says, "Hi, dad." Uh, she said she said she would sleep with the plumber for a million quid. He goes, "Aye, okay." Go and ask your sister if she would sleep with the plumber for a million quid. 
So he goes off and uh, five minutes later he comes back and he goes, Hi Dad, my sister said she would she would sleep with a plumber as well for a million quid. And he, so the dad says to him, well, there you have it, son. He says, in theory, we're, we're sat here on two million quid. In reality, we've got absolute shit all and we're living with a couple of slags. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, this podcast has become a bit of a comedy central it, rather oh, than that's a, good, the it, bike racing, I but think, uh, over to Keith anyway. Over to Keith, yeah, crack on with <laughs> yeah. that, crack on with that. There we are. <laughs> So we're joined by four times British British champion and all round nice guy Keith Farmer. How are you doing, Keith? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks. Uh, all, all good, really, considering. I was about, I was about to say, Chrissy, we don't even know if he's a nice guy yet. He's, we've just about to interview him. He could be a total arsehole, for we know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> not that bad. No, <laughs> I know. I know. I know Keith well, and uh, I, luckily I've spent a couple of. Uh, a couple of mornings this year, standing waiting for me baking an egg sandwich, having a having a good nap at room. <laughs> it's uh, hard. To, it's hard to beat a, a good bacon and egg sandwich before you go ride a bike. That's the one I off the old candy man. But um, yeah. I how's obviously th- this season? You know, hasn't really went to plan with the with the crash at Knock Hill. I, I guess the most important thing is how's how's the rehab going and uh, how's the the legs doing. Yeah, the click. Considering it's it's sixteen weeks now, it's uh it's it's been eventful. Uh, like the, the pain barrier has sort of exceeded my expectations, to be honest. Because uh, like the first couple of weeks was absolutely horrendous. Uh, at that point, I, d- I didn't really want to ride a bike again. T- in all, in all honesty, uh, uh, with obviously the crash on the Saturday, uh, operated first thing Sunday morning. And uh, then again on the Tuesday, a second operation just to tidy things up and remove bits of bone that weren't obviously going to be back in place, and uh, and get a skin graft. And ever since that that evening, they took me off the uh, the main drug. And uh, ever s- since I went off that, it was just like the first three days was absolutely horrendous. Uh, and because I had because the painkiller wasn't there uh it was just like normal you know uh, normal tablets that was nothing horrific and uh <laughs> it, it it put your mind crazy to be honest i didn't want to know anybody i didn't want to do anything uh i'd hardly spoke to my missus while i was in hospital just because the pain for them a couple of days was horrendous but uh it's ever since then you know I, I, it's it's not too bad it's it's bearable and uh you know, got out of hospital after a week and a half, and uh, ever since then, it's just been, you know, uh, sort of day every day as it comes. Really, uh, it's crazy to be honest. What doctors can do now, and you know, after my second operation on the Tuesday, uh, they had me standing that evening, and uh, and then every day after that was like take a couple more steps, and you know, within a week and a half, they had me fully walking up and down stairs on crutches. And then I got out and, uh, you know, ever since then, it's just been like cryotherapy, uh, traveled to Blackburn for three weeks on the trot, uh, every morning and then just loads of physio swimming, cycling. So it's, it's, it's not too bad now. Uh, you know, it's, it's getting there. It's just the range of movement more than anything now. Bloody hell, you say, well, without a doubt, you know, you, you've, you've literally dragged yourself out of hell there. But, you know, but it's a case of explain to our listeners, you know, for people who haven't obviously seen the crash, you know, what what exactly happened, you know, as far as you can tell? Uh, I've seen P2 on my board, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, I, remember, I remember watching the, the session because it, obviously it was at Knock Hill and uh, the... I think that something had been cancelled, so you had like a f- an hour long qualifying session at the end of the day. Uh, yeah. It was it was absolutely pissing down, horrendous conditions. And I remember there was you, and I think it was the Honda lads, Forres and and you, and like who yeah. were like just you got down in the fifty threes pretty quickly, and then it was just the lap times were like unbelievable for the yeah. weather conditions. It, it but, was yeah, it was, I can't remember what happened with the delay, and uh, our qualifying was meant to be at four o'clock and. Obviously, the rain had just came and, and it was delayed to six. And uh, in hindsight, uh, here, it's one of them. You ride to the conditions, but I just I just genuinely felt really, really comfortable. The bike was mega out of the box and 
to be honest, I was taking liberties really because I, I did feel so comfortable and uh, I went in until, you know, coming with five minutes to go. Uh, I was P2 and in hindsight, yeah, you should have sat there. But uh, being a racer, I've, I've never ever really wanted to settle for P2 and I was just, all I needed was another 10th and uh, that 10th that cost me two broken legs, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, went into turn three like literally started to tuck the front and uh, I just lifted it and with lifting it I, I ran a little bit wide and uh, I just clipped the white line and uh, basically that that was it I was just a passenger then and nine times out of ten out of the big crashes I've had you know the bikes never collected me and unfortunately this time the rear wheel just happened to land across both my legs you know and one uh, my left leg was a compound fracture which obviously came out through, uh, and then my other one, uh, my right tibia and fibula was both of them were broken two separate places. So, yeah, it was no half measures really. To be honest, it was a bit of a scary time because I've never had such an injury like that in all my career. You know, I've broke a bone here and there, but you know, to actually be screaming with the pain uh, was just horrific. To be honest. Uh, then obviously got uh, put to the medical centre and then shipped straight to Edinburgh Hospital, which I'm quite, I'm very lucky because the surgeon that was in there the next morning on Sunday morning was uh, a special, uh, like he specialised on legs and stuff like that. So I was just lucky that, you know, it, it was just right time, right place sort of thing. Not that you want to say that for two broken legs, <laughs> but, you know, I... In the grand scheme of things, I was very lucky. Mm -hmm. It was a bit of a cursed corner as well that weekend for for you for the Tiger BMW team because uh, if I remember rightly, Christian Inden did pretty much exactly the same crash in the dry the next day and broke one of his legs as well. Yeah, he broke. Uh, I, I can't remember which leg he broke now. It was uh, he broke the fibby and in, in one of his legs, and uh, you know in race two, and it was so weird that uh, he even said himself, you know, it was such a a minor crash because he had lost the front but just the way whatever he got collected with the bike and unfortunately uh you know he ended up with a broken leg you know mm. and two, two two broken legs uh in the one team <laughs> at the same corner and one track is just it's ridiculous uh, isn't it yeah but uh, before obviously before Knock Hill, you you stepped up to the elite class after winning the Superstock Championship. How how do you sort of see the beginning of your season? Were you sort of happy with how you adapted to the new bike? And uh, yeah, like what what are your thoughts on the sort of the first hot, the first few rounds of the season? Yeah, like after winning the Superstock, you know, I, I was super excited with you know the Tyco BMW, the new BMW RR coming out, and I was proper proper excited for it and. You know, probably put more effort in than I've ever done, and uh, took a back step of work and everything, and uh, went completely self-employed, put myself on the line till right. This is a make or break year, and uh, you know, to to start the year, the bikes came late. You know, we we got to to, to ride a stock bike uh, a, a one or two times, and then we well, they sort of got a, a half super bike built and christian uh did we share we shared it i think for a day and then this was at a cold kirkus town in northern ireland so uh it wasn't absolutely ideal testing uh winter season testing but uh you know we got out in the bike the bike was really i felt really good with the bike straight away you know because it was so much better than the old bmw but uh the first time i rid my own actual bike was at the very first round so everything was like no matter how similar the bikes are they're always not the same if that makes sense yeah. and mm -hmm. uh you know to to go into brands never ridden my own bike and basically in a sense told if you crash well that could be the end of your round because we have no spare parts uh, so it was a bit of on tender hooks and uh just trying to like build it up slowly but at the same time, you're in the elite class. You know it's your opportunity to to shine, and I I obviously wanted to go out and impress, but at mm -hmm. the same time, you don't want to be lying upside down the gravel trap. And uh, we we come out of the first round; it wasn't so good, but after that, uh, it it got it got better. To be fair, and 
we were consistently inside the top 10 and uh, I think after round three or round four, uh, like I was top BMW uh, seventh in the championship at the time, and 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 every single round I was I was building, you know, considering that it was still a complete super stock bike, uh, bar the electronics obviously from the Motec etc., and uh, it was like I had standard swing and arm, standard engine just everything bar brakes and suspension was uh, basically stock uh, so for how quickly i think you know well for how little time we had on the bike uh, and for how well i was doing you know i think i, I think i'd uh, in myself I've, I've done pretty decent to be fair because especially at donington you know we had really really good pace and free practice too and uh, i was for the last i think seven laps i just went p1 and just kept just kept getting quicker every single lap and you know probably it was the worst thing to happen to me at the same time because went out in fp3 feeling and i need to i need to do the same again and, and i ended up going out not that long into the session and absolutely destroyed a bike down craner but uh and it just from there it knocked me back for the weekend and then uh we went into knock hill and and obviously had the, had that crash, but you know we've had a couple of six six positions this year, and uh, for the amount of time I've had on it, uh, I think I done I well. done myself all right to be fair. And I I know you mentioned about the it was like pretty much a super stock bike. I was actually speaking to one of my friends, uh, Ali Roland Rouse, and he was uh, get, like sort of basically telling us. Uh, the technical side of the the upgrades to the new BMW, and yeah. he was saying how the the superbike is actually when once they get the road bikes, they actually have to take the parts off the, to do with the uh, the sh- the cam timing. You know the shift the shift cam. Yeah, shift the shift cam. cam yeah, because he, he was saying so it's it's basically so they get the bike with all this like trick uh, stuff on, and they have to take it off to turn it into a superbike, which yeah. sounds it sounds so counterintuitive, but you know it's it is the, yeah. the rules. Yeah, that's that's just the way it was, and uh, you know it was frustrating, obviously, to start the season off with no test at all, bar a couple of day cold days, at, you know, in, in around Kyrgyzstown. But uh, at the same time, you know, we felt the the good in the bike. You know, we knew the bike had the capability of of doing well, so uh, it was a sort of you need to think positive on the job and just uh, stay stay with it, really. But uh, you no, know, it it was it was pretty frustrating because obviously this stock bike that I originally rode, and then obviously the next time I was on a super bike, my own super bike, it felt felt slow to it, and just because, like you say, the shift cam, uh, it, it was disabled, so there was obviously not you didn't feel that power come in uh, all of a sudden, but uh, it it was it was still good, uh, and then I think when we got the shift cam eventually working, I think it was either Donington or just after Donington. Uh, but uh, you, you, you didn't, because you were riding the bike, uh, you know, you were never in that low RPM to find the difference in the shift cam, really. So uh, in, a, in a sense, once you got it, you didn't actually feel no difference, if that makes sense. So uh, it, it, it's, the, the bike has really good potential, to be honest. And uh, I think all the bike needs is five miles per hour and that's easier said than done because they've obviously tried with a few engines this year uh to get that extra horsepower in mile an hour but every time they did they they've had a failure so uh mm. hence why they're still running a stock engine we have you been surprised by uh Andy Reid's performances this year, obviously running for Tyco BMW in the Superstock Championship. And uh, after having tested the bike, and I, I know that after you rode it for the first time, you thought it was like a, a substantial upgrade from the bike you were on the year before when you won the championship. Uh, were you sort of maybe expecting more from Andy this year? Yeah, uh, it, it was a tough one for Andy because he'd done so well last year on the Aprilia and had wet race wins and you know, sort of confidence was high, and then he obviously got an injury, came back, and then absolutely snapped his two wrists again, I think. And, you know, he had been off a bike for eight months, so I think he needed wrapped up and sort of cuddled, you know, to give him the confidence back. And I think, obviously, with the new bike, uh, you know, after, obviously, I had rid the first bike, 
my actually first reaction was, oh my God, I said to Philip, I was like, if I, I had that bike last year, no one would have seen the way I went because it was honestly, it was, it felt that good. You know, it, you, you hit every single apex, <laughs> like the old bike, you, you looked for everyone, you didn't hit any of them, but you looked for it. And, uh, you know, the, for, it's, it's so difficult because after I had rid it initially, the, they were, the electronics kept changing, you know, I, and I don't know whose part that was on, whether it was Andy looking at changed or just BMW changing it, but uh, he ended up, you know, just struggling with the electronics wasn't right. And, and I was, you know, with how good the bike was initially, which I felt, I, I was disappointed in Andy because I genuinely thought with that bike, he, he would have absolutely come in and, you know, put the hammer down and, and done some damage on people, really. But, uh, you know, I'd, I think he's just, he's one of them, he's, you know, he's such a talented kid, but he just needs to pull the reins back a little bit, you know, and uh, and finish the season out. And it's, it's people end up remembering you, you know, for not finishing seasons. And this is, unfortunately, this is my first season not finishing since I started in 2011. So, uh it's it's not ideal. You are but... learning. You are learning to walk again, Keith. So don't be too hard on yourself. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean. You've, you've got a brand new pair of legs. So don't beat yourself up too yeah. much, son. At least we've got some titanium in there to keep me supported. So it's it's not too bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, you know, with the new bike, uh, it it was obviously uh, he started to go places at Cadwell, and then you know had a had a big one. And I don't know. Uh, I haven't properly actually spoke to him to be honest since uh, because obviously I've been out and in, injured and. I haven't seen him since, but uh, you know, obviously Taylor's came back and shown the potential, you know, on the new bike, and and it just shows like how how good it how good that bike is, really. To be honest, sure. I think for next year, I think there'll be quite a few BMWs out there of of that, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure. And obviously, you've just mentioned about coming over uh, racing. If did you say from two thousand eleven? Yeah, that was me. I done. Like in Northern Ireland, I done six, uh, six or seven races on us. Uh, as my standard R six, uh, that year in the Irish Championship, and uh, and then basically the fellow that was looking after me, Darren Golly, had actually said to me, he "says you need to get over to England as soon as possible." And uh, we made the the trip over every single round uh, in two thousand eleven, and and then eventually in two thousand and twelve, I moved over here. So uh, it's it was obviously uh, 2011 was the start of the championships. You know, I, I didn't score points at the first round, but then uh, the next six races, tracks that I'd never ever ever been to, and I won them just off the bat. You know, so it was a, a steep learning curve. But uh, I suppose like everything, every everything progresses. But I don't think the uh, the riders and the you know the talent of everyone was maybe just as good whereas at the minute now in every single class in bsb it's just like it's every you know they're breaking lap records all the time nearly every time they go to a track so uh but it's like anything every, everything progresses as i said uh, i remember that that year uh, when you were doing super stock 600 and am i right in saying you were uh, battling with glenn Irwin? yeah yeah so the, yeah the two northern irish lads and uh, yeah. obviously that that sort of rivalry sort of progressed through the throughout the years, <laughs> and then it sort of transferred over to Glenn's younger brother Andy. Uh, how's how's your relationship with the Irwin family? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, no, it's here. I've I've never, you know, at the end of the day, I'm one of them people. I speak to everyone, and no matter who I race against, and uh, to be honest, uh, I've never ever like me and Glenn raced, and we battled every single weekend. Uh, in 2011 and then 12 I moved out and wasn't battling against anyone and then obviously in 7 no eight, uh, 18 was it uh, no 17 sport, sorry yeah. uh, in the super sport uh, I ended up you know battling with Andrew and uh, you know we have we had clashes and this and that and the other and you know he battled into me and I battered into him and it was, it's just racing but uh, I think uh, not, not Andrew uh, Andrew never you know, stop speaking to me or out, but uh, I think Glenn took it a bit more personally than anything, but, uh, you know, I always, 
I will say it a low. It's uh, I always find things, you know, when people don't speak to you, I always find that, that if you say hello, it will obviously annoy them more. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm one of them. Uh, would we'll, we'll go out of my way to say hello just for badness. But uh, that explains yeah. a lot, man, because every time I say hello to you, you don't say anything to me. I was thinking that, you know what I mean? I'm like, that's because I always keep, keep it. I'm like, oh, you're like, oh, that, that, that's that, because that. I can't Sorry. stop thinking of. You, you, the last time I saw you, your face was covered in cream and Cookstown in Northern Ireland. Look, hold on, hold on. Right, that's that's a rumour. Right, that's a rumour. Right, that's <laughs> definitely a rumour. I am not Cameron walking around Northern Ireland to. with... Oh, steady on, boy. The rumour mill is flying here. Yeah. That was a good bit of crack, that. That was a good bit of crack. It was, just, yeah. it was for a charity day with them. Anyway, that little Dawson pillock. Hey. <laughs> it got the upper hand and hawked a huge cake in my face. And I, I was ah, trying to eat right, the thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was that's a good right. bit of crack, man. Yeah. But anyway, let, let's let's go back a few subjects here. So, obviously, 2011, you just thought, right, you did the Irish Championship and then you thought, right, straight into BSB. So, what what's yeah, What's your background before that? Motocross, supermoto, yeah. horse riding, welding, cocaine dealing, <laughs> you know, what, what's your background, son? Uh, well, basically, uh, whenever, I f- before, like, anything, uh, obviously, coming out of school, I was in motocross and this and that and the other, and I always loved motocross, you know, I still, still ride me motocross and that for training purposes and all the rest, but, uh, you know, I moved at 16, I think, I went to supermoto, and then, uh, I was British number two, uh, always top five in the British for a number of years, and then uh, won several uh, Irish championships and several Winter Series Series Irish championships and uh, in the Supermoto, and then uh, I think it was two thousand and nine. Uh, I'd signed up a deal to go f- to ride for KTM uh, in Europe on the Supermoto and last minute it, it fell through like within a week to for me to fly out i was literally packing up and just packing my bags and flying out to spain and, and just stopping there for the year and uh the fella that was organized the whole thing through ktm etc ended up he had an issue at home and I, I, he had to move house etc and uh that was that i just uh well that will that'll do then i'll just pack it in because supermoto in you know northern ireland had, was just starting to die and the, even the british supermoto was starting to die and i just that was enough for me i was just like ah i'll just go back to to my motocross and have a bit of fun and next thing that must uh, have been all that all that you make you make it sound like you've just, like a dirty dish there that that would have been devastating at the time surely you oh know what yeah, I mean? that, yeah. That, that was like a, a career change and like the, the mad thing is, you know, you, you said this around about 10 minutes ago, but, you know, you're still full-time work. You know, you're full-time, you know, British title holder. What yeah. the hell are you doing working? I honestly... I yeah, I, unless you work it's... like Chrissy here. He, he's a part-timer. He, he, he keeps telling <laughs> everyone he's a bloody teacher, you know what I mean? Uh, but what, what, do you, what do you do for a living? Uh, Obviously, they're going to have wheelchair access for you at the moment. <laughs> but, but, you know, but... Yeah, what, the, what do you call it? I work for uh, a digger company and... Uh, basically they they put like a a, it's weightings drainage so they do drainage like pipe uh pipe contractors and uh like we work on a lot of windmills putting uh you know like cable ducting and stuff in and uh we to be honest we've been all over the country our uh uh, our our company so uh it's actually to be fair that reminds me uh you know the at the London air, one of the London airports where they found the bomb, the old World War Two bomb. No, did they blame no. you because you're Northern Irish? <laughs> no, well, uh, it was actually our company that just like brought that bomb up. Uh, oh, you see, oh, they are the connections kicking in here. Uh, What's going? <laughs> so I told them where it was. You see, <laughs> <laughs> good lad. <laughs> yeah. But. but uh, uh, Although you might, you might not, you know. Obviously, you w- would like to go full time with the race and not have to do that. I suppose one one beauty of the the thing that with your work is uh, obviously the location of where you're based. Over, you're not you're not too far from God's country over there, really, are you? Uh, no, I'm not too bad. It's uh, obviously based in Penrith, and uh, you know it's handy. Obviously, you know, racing obviously don't always last a lifetime, and you know it's it's something that. With four British Championships, I, I genuinely thought that uh, I would be making a living out of it by now. But And I've literally, with what I've been through over this last 16 weeks, through my legs and what I've put my family through, and, you know, it's obviously 
I've put it as I said earlier. I put everything into it, you know, and put my job on the line. And you know, I've went self-employed with getting no wages from a team, no wages from my boss because I'm self-employed, obviously. And sat at home for fourteen or well, sixteen weeks, sorry, with no wage. It's uh, a waking job, you know. And uh, I've literally came to the, the the decision that if I don't get a wage out of racing, uh, that I'm, I'm literally done with it. And uh, not that I want to completely just walk away, but, you know, I can't I can't keep firing myself, you know, uh, training every morning before work, then start work at 7 o'clock, then, you know, come home, then train, then come back and see the family, and then, you know, shower in bed. It's, it, with what I've been through and putting my body through, I've just realised that, you know, my body has, has extremely needed a break. Uh, but uh, it's it's one of them. It's I just take everything as it comes. And if it happens, it happens for a reason. You know, and uh, here, if we'll always, I'll always keep thinking positive and my glass is always half full. So, uh, you know, it's there's nothing on the table as yet for next year, but we're, we're, still, thinking, we're still thinking positive on the job. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. You have there's nothing on the table for you. No, I, I, I basically. Uh, hold on, Paul Bird lives in bloody Cumbria. Go knock on his. Move the chickens <laughs> out of the way and go knock on his door. Uh, don't worry, he was the first one to knock on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think like, it, with your titanium legs and go kick some ass. That's what you need to start yeah, doing. You know what I mean? Just yeah. put, how on earth have you not got a job offer? Uh, he is honestly, me winging. I'm not secured for next year. Never. You're four times British championship. My yeah, God. Yeah. I think it uh, racing. A lot of people don't understand the way racing works now. And I think you've opened up a few. I tell you what. There'll be people listening to this with their with their jaws on the floor. Yeah, um, it's. it's my, it, I'm still picking is. mine up here because that is actually a shock, mate. You know, I've, like I say, I've only met you once, and you generally are like a really lovely lad, but. You just you just assume, don't you? You just assume yeah. that you're you're sorted because obviously your your sheer ability and skill on a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem to really pay any uh, dividend really to to have talent these days. I think it's more down to like in a sense riders bringing money, uh, yeah. and unfortunately, I don't have a big sponsor that brings a hundred grand or a hundred and fifty grand to the team. So when when it relies on that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, because I obviously look at money out of the job. Well, there's not too many teams looking at me because of that, <laughs> and that's just the unfortunate thing we're racing now. Well, motorsport in general, not just motorbikes. We had uh, Peter Hickman on the podcast not last week, the week before, and yeah. uh, we we're sort of discussing back in I think it was 2013. Uh, he was at a sort of crossroads at his career, and basically he just finished 11th in the British Superbike Championship, and he he didn't have a, a ride sorted for the following year, and then that's when he took the because he wanted to continue racing and making a living out of it. That's when he decided to go road racing, yeah. and then obviously from there the rest history. Is that something that you've ever considered? Uh, it's something because one of my cousins, Mark Farmer, was killed at the Isle of Man back in '93, uh, I think it was, and uh, I've never really, I've never really had the interest in it. And uh, it's actually it's something that you know that me and my dad does. Well, dad always said to me from the start that if you start bike, you know, racing on the roads, uh, I don't, you know, not to say that. He, he'll just walk away from me, but he'll not support me in a sense and, and not, you know, try to help me out in any single way with it because, you know, it, he knows what obviously can happen because he used to work alongside me, cousin Mark. So that's... Uh, no, that's really... No, honestly, that, that's that's 100% respectable, that, because you, yeah. you, you made a decision from there and people will respect that. Like, I respect yeah. that. And, and, yeah, and it's, that's it's one of them that, you know, if, if I chose to tell... Uh, you know, a few riders because they do Northwest, etc. You know, they obviously get, you know, a bike, a ride easier, and this, and that, and the other. And it was my actual little daddy. He surprised me, and he says, "Would you not think of doing the Northwest?" And I, and I, I, I was that gobsmacked that he actually asked me. I was just like, "No, <laughs> I, I didn't." I, you know, and I just uh, here, I respect the guys that do it, like yourself, Dom, and you know, but it's it's just it's just not for me, you know, and uh, I. I find not find it hard, but uh, you know, to go out and put 
one hundred percent effort into you know short circuit racing and BSB and you know to have for me I I not I don't know maybe I just can't concentrate for that long and they like they're doing a TT or something but like you want the disciplines are different the disciplines yeah. are totally different you know yeah. what I mean and it's and no you've hit the nail totally on the head there and I, I, like like I say it. I've always been a firm believer. Look, you, you either want to do the roads or you don't. And people yeah. and people have come in to to the road scene, looking for money and fame. Yeah. And then, and when it goes wrong, it goes wrong. And yeah. I just think, you know, I get a few minutes. Oh, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm like, well, you know, where was that attitude five years ago? You know, they've been <laughs> doing shorts and like me, yeah. I was dragged up in road racing. and that's all I've ever wanted to do. So, like I say, my hat goes off to you because yeah. you, you've stuck by your gun, son. But um, anyone listening to this, give this give this lad a job for God's sake. You can ride a bike, <laughs> or just a hundred grand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Just, I'll just won't ride a bike again. Just give you a hundred grand. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'll take so, it to a team. No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Keith obviously would like we've covered the sort of Superstock six hundred days, and then obviously won that championship and straight up to Superstock thousand. Was that the sort of time that Paul Bird stepped in to, yeah. to help you out? Yeah, well, actually, to be fair, uh, the first time, uh, because actually my, well, a sense manager at the time, Darren Gawley, uh, who used to ride for Birdie uh, back in the 125 days and, you know, uh, the Premier Two Strokes. And, uh, like, he had said to Birdie, uh, it was actually the first round, round two that year, uh, and he said, look, come watch this kid. He's a bit of a talent and this and that and the other. And, and I'm sure the amount of people that Birdie hears that from is unbelievable but it just happened to work out that you know I, I ended up winning that first race and uh, at Olton and ever since then he, he started helping out looking after the bike uh, got raffled till you know just because uh, honestly my bike was like a motocross bike you know we thought it was mint but when compared to the way Paul Bird does it it was like a motocross bike you know he had sent pictures of you know when he was stripping it down the back of the engine casings and everything, there was like muck stuck to it and everything. <laughs> so, uh, Bertie has, t- to be fair, f- for people that probably won't know, uh, he started h- helping me out, you know, early 2011, uh, looking after, obviously, and helped me out with suspension, you know, tyres, fuel, and then, obviously, with that going forward, winning that championship, uh, he got me, he actually had put me out on a stock vow at... Uh, where was it? Uh, Silverstone in 2011 at the European Stock Vow. And uh, and then, obviously, with doing not so bad, finishing behind, I think, Dan- Danny Buchan, uh, who got a privateer or private ride that, that weekend at Silverstone. So, who, I think, was it 2011? He was quite high up in the Super Stock Vow that year. Uh However, then went to ride the Super Stock Ferry for him in 2012 and, you know, ended up winning, winning that as well, which was a bit a bit bizarre, really, you know, to, to do two championships on the bounce, first, you know, first time in each class. And then moved up till Superbike, which was, at, in hindsight, was just far, far too early for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was my second full year riding a short circuit bike from Supermoto and Motocross, so... I didn't have the the knowledge of how set setting a bike up properly worked, and you know I was just I was just absolutely winging it and basically riding the wheels off the bike. You know, in two thousand eleven and twelve, not so much having a clue of proper setup and going to the super bike. Obviously, made me realise that, and you know, I ended up trying too hard and having loads of crashes, and and then uh, me and Birdie parted part of company sort of half way or just after halfway in the, in the season so first year on a super bike was a was an experience but then <laughs> a uh, bit of an eye opener <laughs> yeah definitely uh but it's it just shows you know i did have pace back then as well to be fair because i topped a couple of sessions you know uh and it was a truck and i was running second or third uh, in a couple of races on Obviously, until I come off, but uh, you know, it we shown we had good pace, but I just needed to calm everything down and obviously stop trying so hard. But uh, rid superbike in 2014 for PR racing, uh, PR tires, I think it is, and uh, 
they were on a quack and it just didn't uh i just didn't click with the bike uh, uh and we basically at cadwell i think we parted company and uh i just i left the rest of that year that was done and then 2015 uh because i hadn't finished the year out again then i i was left with absolutely nothing on the table really to be honest so i missed most of uh missed most of that year and then ended up coming back to ride uh uh super stalker for morello actually it was and yeah, i remember with yeah. uh, josh elliott that's right yeah because that. i've heard of that team before where, where's yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah steve had uh got me out done a test at a quick test at uh donnington and he was super impressed and goes right we'll ride the last round and I ended up going into free practice one and two topped them and qualifying i think we ended up uh third or fourth j- just yeah i remember like, this uh, uh just in front of uh josh who had obviously just been uh put number one uh he just won the championship that year and you know to walk into the team never rid the bike all year and i qualified the champion was <laughs> it was quite funny to be fair <laughs> uh mm-hmm. but then in the race because i hadn't rid a bike all year my arms after six laps just <laughs> went went completely solid and i just i i brought it home in sick i think but uh I just, I just got savage arm pump and couldn't ride. But uh, it, yeah, here's a here's a question for you. Obviously, you mentioned about uh, riding for Birdie in Superbikes, and also the the fact you've ridden for Tyco. If you obviously the the obvious differences with the the manufacturers are are, are like clear to see. But in terms of a team and like the uh, the sort of atmosphere in the team and like what it's like to ride for both teams. What would you say is the the differences? Is there anything that stands out? Uh, like the the Tyco uh, the Tyco team is a lot of image, you know, and not to say that they do a bad job or like that, but it's just it's so of how it looks, you know. Everything has to be right, you know, and it all has to be the job. Whereas, not to say Birdie's doesn't look well because it obviously does, but Birdie goes out one hundred and ten percent to win. You know, and he, he he's obviously, you know, he's t- he's doing the job, and I know the Ducatis are like, you know, the bike t- to be on this year, but uh, you know, he's he spends the money, uh, and I absolutely give him praise for that because no matter what, whether it's mechanics, everyone's treated the same, and if they're not doing their job right, he, he pulls them up, and I, I respect him for that because. You know, with the amount of years he's been doing it, he just has that absolute drive to win, and no matter what it takes, it costs, and he just he just puts everything into it. And I think that's why, in a sense, you know, with chatting to Birdie, I, he obviously keep, he keeps me motorhome for me. Uh, fair play to him, and uh, you know, with being up there collecting me motorhome and this, and that, and the other, and having the crack with him, and uh, you know, he he's just. He has everyone knocking on his door looking to ride a bike. You know, he's he's had he's had everyone, uh, you know, from super sport riders, super stock riders, everything, and uh, uh, it which which is brilliant for him. But should, I, least... should I give him a ring? I feel like <laughs> the only one that hasn't rang me. If he, if, if he wants a road runner, you know, I can I can beep beep like the rest of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh... Here, why not? You know, join the club because <laughs> uh, because I asked as well. To be fair, uh, but when you when you have the pick of riders and certain riders coming back from World Superbike, uh, you know he he has his pick. You know, and uh, because he does his job so well, everyone wants to be in it, and it's it's absolutely. You know, I know it's not a factory team; it's a factory supported team. But you know, he runs it as if it is a clean factory team because everything is not in bold everything's just perfect on it and you know it it shows that look t- top two riders in the bsb are uh redden and brooks and i know they're good riders don't get me wrong but uh it, only for him having the drive to push everything in the right direction and everyone doing their job right it you know he, he's he's doing a good job sure and um Obviously, moving over from Northern Ireland and coming to Penrith, I take it that the, the link there was with Paul Bird. Yeah, well, I'd re- originally moved to uh, Northampton uh, with the girl that I was going with at the time in 2012, and uh, obviously uh, that didn't last, and I ended up moving 
uh, up to birdies into uh, at the end of 2012, and I've just stayed around here ever since. Uh, you know, it's this beautiful place. I ended up obviously whenever me and Birdie fell out, uh, I ended up getting a job with a local company, and you know that was I started that in October 8th, 2013, and and I've been with them ever since. You know, and uh, they're they're good enough as they're a sponsor of mine as well and a, a sponsor that I work for that lets me have all the time off for racing you know it's you couldn't ask for anything better so uh it's it's been it's been good uh, I love I love living over here it's just easier traveling than you know a, a boat trip every time if you're either motor home or a flight you know it just leaves it a really long <laughs> well you end up away a week really don't you do you, do you ever get across to, to our homeland over in Newcastle? Yeah. God's well, fl- country. God's <laughs> country. I, 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 fly, uh, I fly over there. Uh, uh, well, I fly from there every month because I fly back to Northern Ireland to see uh, my eldest daughter, Sophie. So uh, I fly from Newcastle every month. So uh, that's... Those Newcastle the, to Belfast. Yeah. Pop so in for a pint, young'un. Oh. <laughs> what's... Um, <laughs> I don't what's think you could handle a pound. <laughs> oh, oh, what, oh. What's your Geordie accent like? Oh, it's not so good. <laughs> I don't do accents like. Try uh, Kawasaki clutch cover. <laughs> <laughs> Kawasaki clutch cover, like. <laughs> good lad. I tell you what, that's, that's better than my Irish accent, anyway. So. <laughs> we, um, so for, I mean, what does the rest of the year look like? Obviously, will you be will you be down at Brands Hatch at the weekend? Uh, I was going to, to be honest, but because obviously uh, Bill's needing pain, uh, my missus is uh, back to work, so she's uh, she's working this weekend. So unfortunately, uh, well, not unfortunately, but uh, I'm I'm on daddy duties all weekend. So uh, I'll be glued to TSL and the, and the TV, keeping an eye on everything. But uh, no, it's just literally uh, back back. Well, not back to work just yet. I'm signed off. Uh, until the 30th of October, until I go for my last, well, sort of my next checkup, uh, just to see how all all's healing, really. But other than that, it's just uh, waiting on phone calls after this podcast that everyone's going to be coming in with the checks. You're going to have to hire a receptionist, son. They're going to be flooding in. <laughs> I hope so. That's but uh, other than that, now I've all been easy really uh i've been out in my super motorbike today for the first time riding a bike so uh it down at three sisters wigan so uh old six it, tits there <laughs> i like that track even better now i bet you do just you'll be going round totally relaxed just thinking a big ass titties <laughs> just six of them <laughs> <laughs> oh hope your well, wife's not listening to this right you're never uh, going down to wigan again yeah, right well, yeah, probably <laughs> That's me not allowed out of the house again. That's it, good man. Good yeah. Man. So, <laughs> but, how was how was how was it being back on a bike? Obviously, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, like obviously, uh, I just wanted to have a, a little spin out, and it's obviously on the super motorbike. It's something that originally, uh, you know, I've started out and known for so many years, and it was a bit weird at first, uh, but only done a couple of sessions because the way you hold your leg out on a super motorbike. Uh, especially when I was going around right hand or some me inside right leg like was just it weren't uh it weren't great uh so I ended up just leaving me uh, foot on the foot peg and just holding my knee out like a uh, road style so it ended up being a little bit a little bit easier uh riding it like a road bike to be fair so uh it was good it was good uh well it, it's always good riding three sisters oh. isn't it <laughs> <laughs> you're a dirty man keith you're a dirty man <laughs> I, I didn't say nothing <laughs> a yeah, little giggle made it everything there <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all dream don't we we all <laughs> <laughs> and uh, keith obviously like you no know, the the sort of silly season at bsb obviously everyone moving around and stuff do you know any sort of Anything that's not been released, but any sort of gossip of where people are going to be? Uh, I think there's possibly two uh, brothers on a Honda. Yes, uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I think there's a, a possibly my teammate from this year is possibly on a build based bike. Yes, I've also heard that. And possibly uh, Sideshow Bob is possibly on a Taiko bike. 
Sideshow Bob, who's that? <laughs> hey, man. Hey. Uh, it's human. Hey, I'm trying to think hair. Sideshow Bob, I'm trying to think hair. Big feet what? and hair. Are you talking about Bradley Ray? Possibly. <laughs> 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 oh, the, um, drama, the drama everyone just switch off we're just gonna have a go at this eh? uh, and what else have I heard I, uh, I love a rumour what about he's, Chris, Christian Ke- Ke- uh, he's oh, uh, lot, yeah that's my team, teammate that's going Bill Bates yeah. uh, and I'll just fire this in for the mix I love a rumour so Casey Stone is riding for Birdie but you didn't hear <laughs> <laughs> That, you never know, do you? That is, uh, I suppose, the big talking point because, I mean, lots of people have been in the sort of frame. Uh, like you say, World Superbike Ride is coming back. I, I heard Leon Camier a while ago, but then I've also heard that he signed for, is it Marawaki or someone yeah, in World Superbike? Uh, he's, yeah, I'd heard that at Donington, and, uh, but he's he's staying where he is. Uh, I think the the high possibility of anyone coming back, I think it's going to be uh, Leon Haslam, to be honest. Right, okay. With, uh, mm-hmm. from, what, from what I've heard. But uh, other than that, I don't think I've heard out else. Well, spot on. We'll, uh... well, we'll get, we're going to have to wrap it up there with the rumour mill. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> yeah. Watch well, uh, thank... the space, Casey yeah, Stone, exactly. honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Keith, thanks so much for joining us on uh, Chasing the Race. And, and uh, we'll get this put out on the, the, all the usual places. And we'll also stick it on YouTube. We've just made our, our new uh, venture onto YouTube. So we're picking up a few new subscribers. And uh, are you a podcast man? Do you listen to podcasts? Uh, not not uh, recently, to be fair. But uh, no, I'm going to start yeah. now. Because uh, <laughs> uh, to be honest, I can't even wait to listen back to this to get a laugh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, between oh, Geordies well. and Northern Irish people no one's going to understand us <laughs> uh, on, we'll have you got anything else to say Dom? <laughs> I didn't realise you'd be this good a crack actually there you are that's the truth <laughs> <of it. laughs> good man Keeper honestly thank you so much for getting oh, on the show no worries so much, thanks mate. for having us great well uh, thanks for joining us and I'll, I'll, I'll speak to you soon and no uh, I'll see you Send you all, all my best wishes for the, your, your legs. Uh, obviously, hope you heal up soon, and uh, we'll hopefully see you back in the BSB Championship next year. Spot on. I'll do, and good luck for the last round at uh, Brands this weekend. Thank you very much, mate. See you soon. No Take worries. Care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. So, a cracking interview with Keith, obviously, great guest on the podcast and uh, all around nice bloke. What a, what a well spoken gentleman he is, mind, isn't he? Aye, aye. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's had a torrid time this year, obviously, after that off that he had at Knock Hill. That, like I say, he crashed at that corner, and then the next day, Christian Hidden did exactly the same thing and broke broke his leg as well. Um, but you know, it's it. You know, Christian managed to get back on the bike for the next round, where Keith's injuries were obviously much much worse. I think that he said the bone was sticking out of his leg and compound. Gotta love it. Oh, but uh... but the mad thing, it, I tell you what, it's like. Obviously, you've listened to it, and you're still listening, and you better still be listening. <laughs> but uh, no. It's definitely highlighted something to me. You know, the lad's won four British championships and he's still currently jobless. And he's not getting paid to race bikes and you think, what, what, what's happening to the sport? You know, the lad can win championships. He's proven that. Mm-hmm. And it's definitely an eye-opener, like, absolutely definitely an eye-opener. But like you said in the podcast, it'll be good to see him down at Brands, which is where you're going next, aren't you? Yeah, so actually heading off first thing in the morning. Um, so I'll be... First, first thing. I was wondering why I'll I wanted be, to do this tonight. There no, we are, that explains it. be getting up nice and early, and uh, before every round, I go over to um, a place called Activate Physiotherapy, it's called. It's over, uh, like, Time Mouthway, and um, basically, I get my shoulder, like, really, uh, really tightly taped up, uh, just with an injury I'm carrying, so... Yeah, um, for some support, 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 yeah, support, the, support, the, the, support. <laughs> the physio that tapes it up uh, is, comes from a rugby background, and obviously, they're used to, like... <laughs> these series injuries so yeah head over f- i'm booked in there for like quarter quarter to seven get my shoulder taped up come back uh, get the motorhome pack take down the studio and uh, pack pack all my leathers boots gloves honestly helmet. the neighbors they think we're just shooting gay porn in a motorhome <laughs> like, we're like a budget max and padgy like padgy max and padgy that's the one uh, that's our, <laughs> that's our <laughs> new names <laughs> But um, oh. so yeah, get get packed up, get away t- on on the road. Obviously, it's quite a journey for us, so it's like maybe take about six hours in this, and then get myself set up there. And hopefully, if I have some time when I get there, I might even get the podcast out there. And uh, yeah, mega looking forward to the ri- the weekend. Obviously, coming coming off the back of a race win last time out. Uh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> 
after a real shit start to the season, I'm up to fifth in the championship, which after, I think I've missed something like seven, seven races. Uh, so after that start of the season to still have a chance to get fourth uh, is is reasonably okay so obviously we'll try to do consolidate that and if i can you know get a podium and obviously i'll be aiming for a race no no win. no no when 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 you get race wins when you get podium Chrissy, oh, so. this is suddenly you've done it now time to get some more young that's the one so yeah obviously i'll be doing all i can to get a, to finish the season with a good result and uh, yeah, really looking forward to to tying up what's been a, a good season. Um, good man. And uh, I kind of <laughs> I kind of believe the the years flown over the way it has. Uh, so yeah, I'll uh, I'll really enjoy the last meeting. Hopefully, go out with a good result. And um, then I'm actually getting I'm booked in for surgery, twenty uh, ninth of October. Is that the reduction? <laughs> I've, heard, I've seen Emily crying a few times well, coming out the the motorhome here. It, it, it is a reduction, isn't it? It's got to be. Do you know what, mate? It's um, I've been back to the ninth hole and I've been trying to, <laughs> trying to get that hole on, but I just kind of so it, I'm going to have to resort to surgery. I'm afraid, but uh, yeah, surgery on my shoulder. So going, tw- I go under the knife uh, October the 29th. So um, I've got about. I hope a you w- come out with a boob job. <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, it'll be mint. I don't think the podcast will get done. I'll be like, let's have a look at them. Look at them puppies. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a, a week, a week between brands and surgeries to uh, sort of get a few things tied up, and then uh, yeah. But we'll have to get to my aim this weekend. One of my aims is to uh, get some guests lined up for the podcast. So while I'm still in the 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 paddock, now that the dreaded winter's coming, it shouldn't be a that's, bother. That's so, the one. Yeah. We'll have to get some good guests in there. Also, if anyone listening or watching on YouTube. Uh, if if there's anyone out there in the sort of bike race and fraternity that you would like to get onto the podcast, please drop us a message and uh, we, we can then do the leg work trying to get we people We need to on. get a competition going soon. We haven't done one of them for a while. Aye. We're going to have to do something. Uh, well, well, I'll tell you what, these lovely hoodies, right, t- is um, ttcases.com, is dot .com, it is dot .com, ttcases. They're going to set up a shop for us, aren't they? Yes, that's coming, the plan. To, coming so very soon. So obviously, for merchandise. Now, obviously, they're good friends of ours, and all the money actually comes back into the podcast. They're currently selling me hats, and it's the same way. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not taking any money from it. It all goes back into my own racing. So please get, give them a visit on tt, uh, ttcases.com. Yeah. Right, and we'll get, uh, like I say, we we'll just actually need to get the pictures for the, the clothing, and we'll get that out on the website. But that's coming soon, so you'll be able to order your cl- clothing. And uh, once again, Obviously, massive, massive thanks to our sponsors for the show. Um, In Contango Training. That's the one. I'm trying to pronounce that. Honestly, I'm trying to pronounce that properly. <laughs> and uh, also, we've got uh, Postle Weight Construction Limited. There we so, are, good uh, man. Big thanks to Matt Postle Weight for getting in touch and uh, really generous to to support the podcast and uh, yeah looking forward obviously looking forward to the weekend and Spot we'll on. get a new podcast out sometime soon but Good uh, thanks very much and you'll have to get some new jokes for next week <laughs> my life's a joke mate that's all you need to know there you go Spot <laughs> on. We'll, you know, we'll ciao 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 <laughs>